Hi, it's Cynthia DiLorenzi, and we are here today with another terrific interview for you. We have joining us Paul McFadden and Lorraine Ellington, who are the CEOs and founders, or co-CEOs, of um, Zero Point Leadership, which is an incredible organization which I met through my association with the Neuro Leaders Institute here in Washington, D.C. And Paul and Loria have come together to start a program called the Neuro Leader University. I'm very fortunate because I had an opportunity to go through the program and I'm so excited about it. I wanted to share it with you. And if you know me, I am always talking about topics related to the mind, to thinking, to how we can begin to create the shifts we need to, not only in those we lead, but in ourselves. So, Paul and Lori, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having us. Cynthia, so good to see you. Thank you so much. So happy to be here with you. Well, okay, so what, what encouraged you, or what was the catalyst for you to start the NeuroLeader University? Because it's been an incredible program. I can see the amazing work, the resources you've pulled together. But I always, always wondered as we're going through the program, what was the spark that lit that for you? Okay. I think for me, and, and, and I'll let Paul talk about his perspective on it. I have been working as a change facilitator, Cynthia, for so many years, for over two decades. And I have found that change has always been so unsettling for people. It's just been something that people felt took forever, if it happened at all. And this is on an individual level, team level, organizational, community level, at all levels. And I've always searched for what could make change easier, because we're always changing and evolving. It's not something that we can escape, but it seems to be quite painful for people. And so just digging and digging and trying to understand what's happening, I have found that insights from neuroscience have given us so many answers as to what it takes to make change easier and to create the life or the leadership that we really, really desire. And that's that we, we just decided that pulling this all together, making it as brain friendly as possible for people so that they can better understand the, the most complicated organ in the universe that commands everything that we do. And I think there's so much growth and so much change that can come from just having that knowledge and being able to use it and apply it to create the life we really want. And so that's why we created NeuroLeader University from my perspective. Well, what about you, Paul? What were you thinking? Well, I mean, um, I, I, I agree with Lori's sentiments there. Um, I also think that from a leadership perspective, I mean, there's there's a hard reality that, that we are, that we look at in leadership, and that's mm -hmm. it. that is that leaders really want to have the benefit of coaching and training, but when they when they look at it from their perspective, they're like, well, you're showing me all the soft skills, and I really don't think I need that. The soft skills, for me, are low on my list of priorities. And so what our approach does is it takes the, the hard data and the hard science behind those soft skills and gives them that, 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 that analytical, here is your here's your data to support why these are important for you. Here's what's really going on in the brain. And I think when you bring the data to leaders who have, have apprehension about learning the soft skills, they're more receptive to the entire process of, of self-improvement or leadership improvement. And so that was my catalyst you know, for, for, with, with the program mm, as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, what was surprising going through the program was discovering that, number one, everybody in the program was a very high-level CEO we all had very common pain points about leadership and about teams and we all discovered very surprising things about the brain and human behavior as we went through the program and things that we commonly accepted as to be truth based on all the studies we've done before in leadership and so we we're surprised to discover but I was surprised how many people really were very frustrated by some of the leadership aspects and how having this understanding and also knowing that sometimes not even having the knowledge will help us change it. Some people are like, okay, I want you to come into my company and help us because <laughs> it's such a massive problem. Right. Yeah. So that's really intriguing for me to hear, Cynthia. Is there anything that, as you say that, that pops is what was most surprising that kind of bumps up against our conventional knowledge and wisdom? Um, as as to what it takes to change human behavior or even engage people. 
Well, I think what you really have to understand is not what you know, it's what you know about other people. Oh, wow. How you assume other things and how, you know, understanding that leading people by denigrating people, which has never been my leadership style, mm -hmm. and, you know, you know, I think criticizing people perhaps a little harshly is not really going to drive them towards shift or change. You really need to create an environment where you see what they're doing positively, identify those, identify that, and then help to shape what they can use in that positive framework to become a better partner or team member of the entire organization. It was really fascinating. It was also fascinating to understand how other people's behavior really influence us. And if you know, I think what we always understood was that nobody can make you feel the way you feel. You are in charge of that. But actually, but truth be known, we actually are humanly built to be responsive to other people's feelings and take those on. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge breakthrough. So everything, every class, I think there was another major surprise, which was absolutely paramount to understand. But I think it, it fell far beyond just leadership inside a team building corporate environment. Mm -hmm. But far beyond that, it, it really made me think about how we treat other people in our global world and how we can apply some of those things to maybe break down dissension. So it was just really fascinating. It does apply everywhere because our brain is involved in everything. It's not just in workplace settings. <laughs> Obviously, in our family systems, um, it's in our communities, it's in our one-on-one -on -one communications with people that are our colleagues, our friends, people that we're intimate with. So it, it really it does apply everywhere. It's the brain and and the mind. It's both. So I really I really love some of your takeaways. They're, they're just they're fascinating to me, um, especially that impact that we have on each other that I think, and I think this really does also link to why Paul and I do what we do, is because those are considered soft and fluffy. Be nice to people, be kind, it's important you get more out of them. Well, not only do you get more out of them if you do, it, the, the science really says that it has a profound impact on performance in a very, very dramatically negative way if we don't recognize how we impact other people. And I think that that's some of the takeaways that you had. Not only is it just a nice thing, it's basic and essential and fundamental to performance. It is, it's just really a fascinating program. So how did you two get, gain your experience and knowledge in fields of study? Because I don't recall having neuroscience program offering when I was in the university. So how did you come up um, with this? How did you come into this field? Well, it's really been a, more of a, a self journey, uh, looking at our experiences. And, I, and if I look, talk about myself personally, my experience has been I, I was a senior IT leader and, um, and a consultant. And for me, what was frustrating for me was, one, seeing how different leaders treated other people and, and the way they treated other people, what the output was that they were getting from those teams and, and, from, and from their employees. And I was really frustrating that it wasn't something, it wasn't even across the board. So I really wanted to find out what made the difference. I always thought I was a pretty, you know, emotionally intelligent leader, but it had to be deeper than that. And so there were things that I was probably doing personally that I didn't really have an understanding, a grasp of, it just felt natural for me to do. But I wanted to find a formula, per se, you know, there's a formula out there that exists. And how, do, how do you become this leader that, you know, gets high-producing high, high teams um, that are, you know, productive, obviously, but that, that take the organization forward? So it was just more of a self-discovery, um, doing a lot of reading, um, having conversations with, with Lori about it, who was also on that same path. And, you know, we're all students. And... And that, 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 that learning experience doesn't end at, you know, when you graduate degree or whether you're a master's or a PhD, it continues for the rest of your life. And so, you know, just create just, just continuing that, that journey as a student um, led, led, to this, led to this point. Yeah, I, I think for me, Cynthia, you know, I, I went into psychology. My, my past life, I was a psychotherapist, helping people facilitate change in their lives and, again, create that life that they really they desired over the one that they had. And working with trauma, in, again, in my past life, um, I, I had to dig around and better understand what's happening. You know, if we kind of lift up the hood, what's happening inside that would help us better understand um, why we do the things we do, 
what it takes to actually create change as efficiently and effectively and less painful as possible. And um, I started studying neuroscience a long time ago. Um, it was a little bit weaved into my my work in university, you know, a long time ago. But I really took my own initiative and started studying the brain. And then when I became a leader, I realized, hmm, some of this actually, this doesn't just apply to the people that we label as patients or clients. We all have brains and we all have minds, and it's impacting our our behavior and in our how we actually access human potential. And we're not even touching our potential because we don't understand how we can leverage this unbelievably powerful complex organ called the brain. And so I started thinking, well, we could really apply this to leadership and change management at the organizational and systemic levels, community levels as well. And um, that's how we got into neural leadership. Uh, so I was like, oh, this is where it's at. You know, it really is fascinating to understand by pulling back and taking a peek and a glimpse through research of what's going on in the brain and how different sectors of the brain work and serve us, you can really save yourself a lot of false starts, a lot of errors, and we all make mistakes. I mean, that's really what leadership is built upon in our success. It's failures that we build on to lead into where we're success. It's just continuing down the path. But I think we're just on the cutting edge of learning even more about human behavior and the brain. So tell us about your next class, how it works. Tell, share with us so that you know, you're know you finishing up this class. So what's to come, and how should people plan to reach you and get involved? Good. Well, we are, thank you for asking that. We actually have a NeuroLeader Masterclass coming up at the NeuroLeader University that opens up for leaders on the 18th of this month. Um, it take, the coaching aspect of it, the calls, take place at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. In order to sign up for that, you would go to zeropointleadership.com forward slash VMC in order to register. Also, Cynthia, anybody is more than welcome to call us to, or email us to learn more about it. They want to talk it through. Um, it's a lot to try to understand and take in what a neural leader masterclass would entail. I think you have done just a beautiful job of helping people get a better idea of how this applies. But they're more than welcome to call us. Um, I can be reached at Lori at zeropointleadership.com, and that's L A U R I E. We can also be reached at 202 379 Four eight one two. So anybody can call, anybody can email. Um, otherwise, you can check out some more information um, on our website, which is the um, the link that I gave just a minute ago to learn more about the class. We would love to have more folks involved. It's wonderful. And just to share, if you're thinking about joining in this program, and I'll share my experience. So we meet one day a week at 7 p.m. for an hour and we review all that we've actually been assigned to do in the week before but don't worry it's not that kind of homework it's really having the opportunity to take time and I'd always just find a quiet hour or two on my Sunday morning because that's usually when I can kind of get away from everybody and everything turn everything off and watch a video understand what's going on you'll be able to really begin to and and much more I mean there's much more learning there's much more other tests and other programs that you you get and these unbelievable resources that you can come and build up your skills for thinking and brain work and all these other things so it's fun it's informative it is very much changing and if you are a leader and you're influencing others and I think everybody I ever know is doing that this is an important class for you to take number one you get rid of things that probably aren't serving you and you'll learn new skills and new information that will be invaluable to you and make, help you excel as a leader and help you grow your company or whatever endeavors you have underway. Paul, what about you? Anything you want to add? Well, I think Laurie covered it. Um, you know, the, the website is, is very self-explanatory when you get there at uh, zeropointleadership.com forward slash VMC. Um, but this, just the experience itself, you know, you, you alluded to it. There, you know, there is a training video which which is very informative and it really covers a lot of the, the, the neuroscientific research. But there's also, you know, very you know integrated, you know, cognitive brain training. There's mindfulness practice. There's um, emotion regulation, emotion regulation techniques and tools that are used. And so there's a lot of different things going on um, with the platform and, and, with, and with the program itself. And so it's, it's really exciting. And it's it's actually this this program is is this type of platform this type of delivery it hasn't been done before in, in this area so 
that's what makes it even more unique. Um, I hate to throw out the buzzwords unique and you know state of the art, but <laughs> it really is. It's something that has not been done in, in this in, for this type of um, delivery for this type of program. So really well, one of my favorite things was the brain games, which I think these studies indicate that women love to play games. And one of my favorite, you know, whenever I needed a break or from the stress, I'd go play some brain games and and feel like I was really strengthening up um, core sectors of my own brain, which was really engaging and interesting. So you can play a game and it's good for you, and I like that. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we know in order to manage our lives, we really have to have that cognitive stamina and resilience. And those games are really a nice, fun way to build that, Cynthia, which is why we integrated them into this program. So, will you be adding additional series on? Will you have a level two or a level three, perhaps, in the future as you learn more and more science is coming through? It's yeah. a great question. Yeah. It's already in the works and being planned. We have a um, Neuro Leader Boot Camp that is the follow-up to the master class. And um, it takes things a little bit deeper and it adds in another, this, as you know, this, this class has biofeedback so that you can get a better look at what's going on inside your body so that you can regulate and keep your cool under pressure. With the um, boot camp, we are going to actually add in another form of biofeedback called neurofeedback. So you'll actually be feeding back your own brain waves so that you can manage and control those better so that you can increase, which I think you would be interested in, um, st alpha states, for example, that help you be more creative and have more insights. Um, that's just one example of something we'll add. We're also going to be adding some additional training that help leaders. And again, we the word leader could be a parent. It could be someone in the community it doesn't necessarily have to be C-suite. It can be, and that's who's in this class right now. But as a, um, as a leader, being a coach is important to be able to help evoke insights and change in other people. And so we're adding the, this component to the boot camp as well. So a little bit more intense, a little bit longer, lots of fun. Okay, definitely sign me up for the boot camp. I cannot <laughs> wait. And you mentioned something that in our last class that we covered, which was alpha waves, that was fascinating. That absolutely was stunning. And I think I always I think it's often referred to as the zone, but how rare it is. But you believe that you have ways to help people as access that portion of that place because it's an alpha that precedes these great break breakthroughs in thought. We absolutely, absolutely do. <clears throat> if you can feed back your brain waves, you can learn to manage them and see which ones you are producing more, which frequency you're in. And there are certain brainwave frequencies that are associated with states of relaxation, states of concentration, and states of creativity. Mm -hmm. For example, alpha and theta. And so we want to help people be able to induce those states strategically and when they need them. There's a time for faster waves, there's a time for slower waves, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating. Well, I have to tell you, if that intrigues you, you need to sign up for the class. But each class, you learn something so pivotal. And, and you covered a lot, but there's always like one major thing that just you hear at that time. Mm -hmm. But there's great resources because you can come back to them time and again. So it's not like you're in a class and you're out. You actually have the opportunity to come back in and jump in on some of the game programs, your um, biofeedback programs, all of these great things that will be invaluable tools for you. And you will call and thank me for telling you about it and sharing Paul and Lori with you. I want to thank you guys for joining us. This is a great conversation. Yeah. yeah thank you. Very yeah, much. I really enjoyed it. Love talking about helping people perform at their peak. <laughs> oh, I love it. And you guys are awesome. So um, we'll be doing a review of class here, and I can't wait till we have that this week. And absolutely, as soon as you know about the boot camp, and we will certainly be sharing news about this upcoming program here at Success in the City. So until next time, y'all keep your brains operating in the alpha state. Ooh, <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. <laughs> Thank y'all.